It's December 30th, 2014, and this is your 40 and Slip Science News from ScienceRecorder.com. Researchers of Moscow State University in Russia recently secured the country's highest ever scientific grant to build the world's largest DNA depository, containing the genetic material of every live species in world history. TASS Russian News Agency reports that the research project, aptly titled Noah's Ark, received a grant worth 1 billion rubles, U.S. approximately 194 million, and will take place in the research and technology valley of the new compound of MSU, occupying approximately 430 square kilometers. It is scheduled to be completed by 2018. It will have the facilities for cryogenic storage of the cell material samples, with an opportunity to reproduce them in the future, said MSU President Dr. Viktor Sadovichny in a recent news conference. It will also have information systems because there's no need to keep absolutely everything in test tubes. A system that will unite this bank with other similar banks in Russia and quite possibly abroad will be set up. According to the Daily Mail, the project is the latest in a line of world DNA banks which have been growing in the past decade due to major technological breakthroughs and growing concerns for species extinction. The most notable frozen zoos include one at the San Diego Zoo, currently holding nearly 8,400 samples from over 800 species. Britain's Frozen Ark project, holding 28,604 frozen DNA samples, including over 7,000 from Red List endangered species, and an additional project in Russia housing at least 1.5 million seeds from plants and vegetables in cryo storage in Yakutsk. If this project is realized, it will mean a thrust forward in the history of Russian science, as this will be the first country in the world to create a true Noah's Ark, said Sadovichny. It envisions a depository or a databank on all the living species of Earth. From techtimes.com The Blue Hole is an underwater cave off the coast of Belize which has long attracted divers and tourists. Now rock samples collected at the feature as well as nearby lagoons could answer one of the great mysteries of archaeology. The ancient Mayan civilization existed for thousands of years in Mesoamerica. The area is now occupied by Mexico and Central America. The people here developed their own system of hieroglyphics as well as advanced mathematics for their time. The calendar developed by the Maya named dates 10 centuries ahead of the time it was developed. This is the calendar which made popular news in 2012 when some people claimed the dating system predicted the end of the world. The ancient Mayan civilization collapsed in the 10 decades between the years 800 and 900 of the Common Era, and the population fled the cities. Scattered remnants of the once mighty society were seen again in surrounding areas as rains returned to normal levels 11 centuries ago. The earliest known Mayan artifacts date from around the year 1800 BCE in the opening centuries of the Mayan civilization. The people spoke just a single language. During their pre-classic period which ended in the year 250 CE, many different languages appeared in the society. Today, approximately 5 million people living in South and Central America still speak about 70 languages first heard in the time of these ancient people. Ancient Mayans built massive pyramids and were able to develop sophisticated naked eye astronomy. In many ways, they were far in advance of other civilizations of their time in the region. The earliest Maya were mostly farmers, living in an agricultural society. By the 3rd century of the Common Era, these farmers had started to farm the hills surrounding their enclaves as well as valleys in the region. Populations began to leave their cities after the year CE 700, a process which continued for more than a century. Wars became common and building ground to a standstill. By the year CE 900, most of the cities once populated by vast numbers of Mayans were abandoned. Archaeologists have been unable to uncover evidence of war or sudden disaster. Some researchers speculated the loss of favorite foods such as tikal deer may have driven people from their homes. Other investigators suggested deforestation could have created an environmental disaster. Even the fear of evil spirits was thought by some to play a role in the civilization's demise. Drought, however, was also a popular theory, now backed up by new research. 
Researchers collected sediment from core samples drilled around the region, finding evidence a massive drought struck the area during the time of the societal collapse. When you have major droughts, you start to get famines and unrest, Andre Droxler of Rice University, head of the new study said. From WashingtonPost.com Sometimes, science means getting a bunch of finches sloshed, or at least giving them blood alcohol levels of around 0.08%, which is pretty crazy by bird standards. In a study published last week in PLOS1, researchers from the Oregon Health and Science University tempted zebra finches with spiked juice, but not because they wanted to help the lab animals ring in the new year in style. The researchers study birdsong to learn more about human speech. Birds learn to sing in much the same way humans learn to talk. In fact, a recent study found that birdsong and speech even rely on the same genes. It's much easier to keep a bird in a cage and study its brain than it is to do the same with a human toddler. So birds give scientists some of our best insights into the brain mechanisms that make speech possible. If you've ever talked to someone under the influence of alcohol, you know that it makes speech more difficult. But there hasn't been much research on vocal impairment caused by alcohol, mostly because scientists have so few non-human lab animals capable of speech to work with. At first we were thinking that they wouldn't drink on their own because you know a lot of animals just won't touch the stuff, researcher Christopher Olson told NPR. But they seemed to tolerate it pretty well and be somewhat willing to consume it. And once the birds were buzzed, they started to slur their songs. The most pronounced effects were decreased amplitude and increased entropy, the researchers wrote in the study. So in other words, their songs got quieter and less organized. But not all parts of the song were equally affected. Zebra finch songs are made up of specific syllables, ones with distinct acoustic structures, and some of those syllables seem to be more garbled in tipsy trillers than others. The researchers think this might mean the, that alcohol affects certain parts of the bird's brain circuitry more profoundly than others, leading the sounds produced by that part of the brain to end up sounding more sloppy. Further studies will explore that possibility, as well as whether or not alcohol consumption keeps birds from learning new songs. In other words, there's a lot more to be learned from drunk birds. I'm Chris York, and this has been your 40 and Slip Science News.